I thought we might have one more session uh, talking about some of the exciting things that the Lord did in Little Rock, Arkansas in the summer of 1998. And we've been thinking about this idea of the glorious gospel, the treasure within the believer who is pictured as a clay pot and how we get knocked around. And when we get knocked around, of course, what happens if we are filled with Christ that's what splashes out. I think of Paul not only in chapter 4 where he talks about being stressed on every side, but he speaks about this when he came to Macedonia and he says, um, our bodies had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts. Inside were fears. <laughs> so here's the great apostle Paul being honest about this. Courage is not being fearless. Courage is overcoming fear with faith and trusting God to get us through it. And uh, I just thought I'd tell a few more stories. If you're interested in more, you can go to the Uplook website and you can find the August 1998 Uplook magazine and many of the stories and a description of the effort that went on there at Little Rock is found in that edition of Uplook magazine. I think about uh, the college campus. One of the things about Little Rock, Arkansas, that was the place where the federal government came in, the military came in, to force the integration of schools in the South. And yet after all these years, Little Rock, Arkansas is still very segregated. And uh, Michael Thomas, was preaching on the campus there. He was a little unsure about that because it wasn't something he had a lot of experience in. But God gave him tremendous power. And as he was preaching in the gospel one day, a young African-American student came along and she tauntingly asked him the question, do you want black people in your church? Because really there are very few, if any, integrated churches in Little Rock. And uh, Michael had the presence of mind to whip out his wallet. And he said to her, we don't just want them in our church, we want them in our family. And he showed her a photograph of two little black girls. And she said, who are they? He said, those are my daughters. He was probably the only one on the team of 100 plus people who was able to do that. But God had him at the right spot, at the right moment, to express to this young woman the heart of God towards everyone. I think of two young men, both of them fairly reserved, not really outspoken per se, but they were traveling along, had to stop and get some gas at a local gas station, and one said to the other, you get the folks outside, I'll get the folks inside. They had some packs of literature, they were going to pass out the literature to the customers. Well, the young man who went into the establishment, found the manager behind the desk and um, asked, could he share the gospel? And the young fellow said, I'm not interested. I'll tell you, I'm just interested in one thing. I'm interested in getting enough money to buy the service station down the road. And then seeing the owner coming towards the building, he said, oh no, he said, don't tell my boss. If he finds out, I'll lose my job. And so the boss walked in. He was busy doing something a little further over. And so this Christian walked over to the boss and said to him, I know something you don't know. Well, if he didn't have the attention of the young man behind the counter, when he first asked him if he wanted to share the gospel with him, he sure had his attention now. He had no intention of sharing the news about buying a gas station. What he wanted the man to know, the thing that he knew that other people needed to know, was that his sins were forgiven, Christ was his Savior, and heaven was his home. And uh, so taking what seems to be an awkward situation, a rejection of the gospel by this young man, turning it to advantage, was something the Lord Jesus was the master at. He was the master of the gospel ricochet. And he can teach us how to do this, how to take these bad situations and turn them for good. 
In the magazine, there's an article written by Craig Legro, a dear friend who the Lord has used in many ways to encourage me in evangelism. One of his secret weapons is to spend half an hour thinking about the Lord Jesus before he goes out in the gospel. And uh, with a glowing face, with, with a heart full of joy, this is the secret of power. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And if we were madly in love with the Lord Jesus, there's nothing that could turn us away. He talks about working in a very low-income district neighborhood in Little Rock. It was blistering hot, 98 degrees. It was uphill and downdale. It's a very hilly city, very difficult, upstairs and downstairs, everywhere you go. And as he was going from door to door, he came to the door of one uh, lady's house. And as soon as he began to speak about the Lord Jesus, her face uh, burst into a smile. And she was so happy. And when she saw the John 3.16 text that was a gift to her. She was so excited and she said, here, let me pay you for this. Craig said, oh, no, no, this is, this is a free gift. This is just for you. And so he continued on down the street. But after a few doors, he noticed she was standing out on the stoop and she was waving to him and wanting him to come back. And so he made his way back and, and she squeezed into his hand three one dollar bills. She said, this is my food money for the week, but I don't have to eat. She said, I just want to show you how much I appreciate this John 316. Well, Craig still didn't take the money, but it moved his heart to think that here was a dear woman who was not going to eat as well that week because she was so overjoyed to have a little gospel text. He went uh, further into the neighborhood and there was a woman who offered him a Coke to drink. She said, could I give you a hug? She said, I have been in this house for 21 years and you're the first person that ever came to my door to talk to me about Jesus. There are other people, church members, who said, you know, our big church tried to do this and they had some pushback and so they just gave up. And nobody does this. It's such a tragedy. We have the freedom. We have the opportunities. And we're not using them. And if we don't use the freedom while we have it, we're going to lose it. We need to get out with the gospel. We need to put the go back in the gospel. My daughter Moira was 15 years old when we went to Little Rock. And she wrote a little paragraph, which I inserted on the back page of the magazine. And this is what she wrote. The same power that is in us. Remember this idea that God has filled us with treasure. And the idea is that in this world where we get knocked around, we have the privilege of letting that splash out, letting people see the beauty of Christ and the glory of the gospel. She wrote, the same power that is in us brought God down to earth held Jesus to the cross, and raised him from the dead. We have settled down in our comfortable lives and forgotten this power. When in Little Rock I sensed an awakening of Christians and tasted more than ever before the power of prayer. I saw tears in prayer meetings, and in return there were tears in the eyes of sinners. I saw the vibrant smiles of Christians telling war stories and saw new believers and their joy. I noticed selflessness, perseverance, and an energy that was supernatural. What has happened to Christianity? We need to allow God to bring our smoking flax to a roaring fire. The world has a hunger. We have the living bread. The Great Commission is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Let us be willing to obey our great Lord and sow the seed of life. God raise up another generation who lay aside the video games and the, the bodybuilding and 
all of the things that distract us and throw ourselves with a passion into the gospel, God will stand by us. He will go before us. He will follow after us. He will protect us. He will embolden us. He will thrill us if only we will allow ourselves to be knocked around a bit and in doing so, let Christ splash out of our lives.